Leading up to the 2018 NBA Draft, there was a lot of discussion around who the top three picks would be that year. One of the most uncertain variables involved in this draft was the arrival of Luka Doncic to the NBA. Given he was playing in another continent that has a very different style of play, scouts did not have an accurate comparison point as they have with college basketball players. It was hard to tell objectively if he was a better player than some fellow prospects or if his development would translate well into the NBA. Fast forward two seasons later, and Doncic is one of the most famous NBA superstars and has captivated the hearts of fans around the world. But how did the so-called experts and draft analysts evaluate the teenage EuroLeague MVP before the 2018 NBA draft? Today we will take a look at the most inaccurate draft analysis predictions for Dallas Mavericks superstar Luka Doncic. But before we do, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This kid's a really, I mean, he's better than Ricky Rubio, but he doesn't look special to me. My takeaway, he doesn't pop athletically. I don't see a special thing. I think Marvin Bagley's interesting. Okay, I would draft him number one. Colin Cowherd, the famous host of the sports talk show The Herd, wasn't the only person concerned with Luka Doncic's athleticism, or lack of it, thereof. His NBA Draft.net profile said, he can be considered a marginally average athlete by NBA standards. The lack of explosiveness makes it really difficult for him to create his own shot against great athletes with good wingspan. And honestly, it's true. Doncic isn't the most gifted athlete, and he probably never will be. He has also been criticized multiple times for being on the chubby side when it comes to his body. But as it has turned out, Luka has learned to use his lack of elite athleticism and his body all to his advantage. As long as he can keep that frame, he should continue having success at driving toward the rim and using his body to create some space for shots. In a basketball league in which most of its players are also some of the top athletes in the world, it made sense to be concerned on how Doncic's subpower athleticism would translate or affect him when playing at the highest level. But as his draft profile concluded, whether he will become a star at the NBA level though depends on the way he and his team will manage his athletic and defensive limitations. And the Mavericks have done just that. However, having concerns about how he would fare on the defensive end wasn't an unpopular opinion either. Another outrageous take was by analyst Rashad Phillips. Here's a guy that has a high IQ, great craft, can handle the ball, can play on the ball screen, can shoot a little bit, can get in the lane. But on the defensive end is where he's going to struggle. His feet are slower than rush hour traffic, really slow feet, and he's going to have to guard the Jason Tatums of the world. Because I've heard people talk about him like he's going to be bringing the ball up the court, like he's a point guard, like he's great in the pick and roll and all. He can play the pick and roll, but he's not a point guard. He's got good vision, but he's still got slow feet, and those slow feet hurt him on the offensive end too. So when I look at him on tape, he struggled with quick defenders, guys getting in his pocket, getting after him. Not a great athlete. So his NBA comparison is Hito Turkoglu. Slower than rush hour traffic? Compared to Hito Turkoglu? Really? The athletic limitations part is something that, as we already mentioned, Luka has sorted out on his own by honing his game around his body and perfectly adapting. But when it comes to the defensive end, Dallas has put him in a great position that makes him an average defender while he works on developing that part of his game. While he is by no means a defensive stopper, the Mavericks have such a potent offense led by Doncic himself that his defensive shortcomings, or the teams for that matter, don't have much of a negative effect. Among players that appeared in at least 30 games this past season, Luka ranked third in offensive rating, scoring 116.7 points per 100 possessions, just behind Danilo Gallinari and Kawhi Leonard, who edged him by a mere 0.2 points. Want to guess who the next five best offensive ratings in the list belong to? Dwight Powell, Kristaps Porzingis, Dorian Finney-Smith, Boban Marjanovic, and Tim Hardaway Jr. All Mavericks. It's no surprise that Dallas had far and away the best team offensive rating in the league at 115.9 points per 100 possessions. Yes, Doncic is at best an average defender, but he more than makes it up with his superb offensive skills. On a different note, did the so-called expert Rashad Phillips really compare him to Hedo Turkoglu? Hedo Turkoglu was a Turkish 6'10 forward who could shoot the lights out. He played almost 1,000 games throughout his 15-year career, with averages of 11.1 points, 4 rebounds, and 2.8 assists, while shooting 38.4% from 3. That's not a bad career by any means, but it's definitely way short of what Luka has been able to accomplish in just two seasons. 
Surprisingly, his NBA Draft.net profile had Turkoglu and former Chicago Bulls forward Tony Kukoc as player comparisons for Doncic. Of course, they're linked because of their European roots, but Doncic's skills were always way more advanced and his ceiling was always going to be higher than both Turkoglu and Kukoc. The biggest difference between them and Luka is their shooting capabilities, which is another thing many of the experts and analysts criticize Doncic for. Even to this day, Luka's three-point shooting percentage isn't eye-popping, and it would actually be worrying if taken out of context. This season, Doncic shot 31.6% from behind the three-point line, way below league average. But the lone percentage doesn't take into account the difficulty of those shots, most of which are step-back threes and heavily contested and deeper shots. Per NBA stats, only 6.2% of Luka's shots were catch-and-shoot threes. In comparison, 36.1% of his shots were pull-up threes. The high volume also affects the percentages, as Doncic attempted almost nine threes per game. Shooting selection can become a little iffy, occasionally with some off-balance shots and long floaters. Can fall in love with his pull-up game and settle too much against switches. Kinda streaky shooter for now, inconsistent three-pointer. Must have feet set to shoot well in catch-and-shoot situations, reads Luka's draft profile. Yes, Doncic can still work on improving his shot selection, but look at how efficient the Mavericks offense has been, even when Luka takes his many tough shots. It's hard to imagine how much better it can get if Doncic starts taking more efficient shots. The closing paragraph of Luka's draft profile starts. Luka Doncic is by all measures a prodigy. Europe has never seen anything like him. He has been playing at the highest level of European basketball since he was 16 years old and excelled. The way he handled this pressure the past few years has been amazing. Yet, somehow, three teams still passed on him. The Phoenix Suns, the Sacramento Kings, and also the Atlanta Hawks, who actually were the team that drafted him, but they already had a deal in place to trade him to Dallas. These teams passing on him didn't make much sense. Then Suns head coach Igor Kokoskov coached Doncic in Serbia, and they won the Eurobasket gold medal together in 2017. So he knew how good Luka was firsthand. Then Kings GM Vlade Divac had also seen and heard a lot about Doncic, and many thought he wouldn't hesitate to draft him. The Hawks had decided long before they wanted to draft Trey Young and build around him, so they didn't even consider drafting Doncic. But now, they are all surely regretting it even more with every passing day. Did you think Luka would become a star this quickly? Will he win an MVP or a championship before he finishes his career? Tell us what you think in the comments down below. And once again, make sure to leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching another Swish Central video, and join us next time for more NBA basketball content.